My life without the Waterloo stage, it, it's, it, it, it's, it's what drives me, you know. Once it was a movie theater. In fact, for 60 years, it was a movie house from 1937 until 1997. Just two weeks after it screened its last film, it reopened as the Waterloo Stage Theatre, a very successful live theatre house in Waterloo, Ontario. It stages anything from jazz to pantomime, and it's the brainchild of local entrepreneur Steve Roth. Steve and I recently sat down in the theatre he owns with his partner, Dale Hobbs, to talk about the tribulations and joys of owning a theatre. Steve, you're a local boy, born and raised here. Are you still here by design, by accident, out of fate? I love this town, and it's, it, some of our actors from Toronto, we're getting more and more actors from Toronto, say this is the big little city, you know. I love that big little city feel. Um, I can't imagine living in Toronto or anywhere. I just, I guess, you know, being here for 30 plus years, it's, it's my life, you know, it's the, it's the town you grew up in. So yeah, I guess I'm here. By design. By design and by luck. I love it. I love it. That's it's a great town. That's nice. Yeah. Uh, when you went to college and you studied broadcasting for three years, what did you have in mind as a career? <laughs> you know, it, it's, that's a funny question because when kids, I think that when you leave high school now, you're too young to be making life decisions. You're putting out lots of money and where are you going to go, kind of thing. At that point in my life, I loved broadcasting. When I was 17, I had started a video company doing weddings and stuff like that. And I, I loved broadcasting. I loved talking. I loved video was still kind of new then, you know, the home video camera, and, and it was changing. So I thought, this is where I want to go. And I think, like a lot of people who go into broadcasting on air, tell what I thought I wanted to do. And you quickly realize that that's not where you're going to be, I think, on day one of broadcasting. Um, but I quickly learned that I loved editing. You know, Why not on air? Um, Why do you say you quickly learned that's <laughs> not where you were going to well, be? Well, I think it's like being on stage. Like I got into theater being on stage and as much as I loved being on I, I've grown to love the other side of it. I love watching it come together. I love making it happen. Making it happen. I love watching the audience watch a show and with TV, it's just, you know, and especially when, you, when you're there with 30 p plus people in the broadcasting program, there's some really talented people out there. You say, this person would be great. And, and you know, it's, it just, I found that I, my love was, was for editing. I loved editing. But tell me about owning a theater. When did this, this concept, this dream, this idea come to you? Um, you know what, I think it kind of evolved. I, I, again, I was, theater's always been a part of my life. Performing has been always a part of my life. Uh, you know, I think my first show was in kindergarten. I was one of the worms in Robin in the Rain. I was very, very good as that worm, I, I remember. I was probably the best worm. And uh, I just, you, anyone who's been on stage, you know, it's, it's so contagious, the, 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 the give and take of the audience and the energy, there's nothing like it. It's, and you're out there and things are going to happen and there's nothing you can do to turn around. You, there's people watching you and you're, you're there to perform. And so I guess I've always kind of been a performer. Um, and then I moved on to high school, got heavily involved with the school musicals. Uh, it's funny, I, in grade nine, I think of grade nine as a crossroads for me. In grade nine, on the midget basketball team, which is really exciting because I played basketball. But I also made it into Oliver. I was one of Fagan's boys and I got a line. <laughs> and then I was going to basketball rehearsals, or basketball rehearsals, ba basketball practices in the morning and rehearsals at night. And I could never make the games for basketball because I was at Oliver rehearsal. So do I play basketball or do I stay with Oliver? And I stayed with Oliver and, uh, and since then it's just been, it's, it's just grown from there, you know? And, uh, um, I just have always loved being involved in, th in theater. But, but not everybody who loves being involved in theater ends up owning a theater. <laughs> it's theater. true. That's true. So how did that one come about? Well, the whole idea of Waterloo Stage Theater, I think we opened in 97. I, uh, and, and immediately I thought, holy smokes, this is much bigger than I ever thought it would be. Um, I was, when I graduated from Conestoga College, I quickly learned that I probably won't get a broadcasting job now that I've graduated, which didn't happen. You know, it's, it's, it's funny the way, and we were talking about this earlier, that you almost have to create your own path now. You know, there used to be a time where you'd graduate and there'd be something waiting for you. Even 
five years before I went to broadcasting school, you doing some night work on, on radio or something to get your foot in the door, uh, whether you're at the TV station or, but you know, there's nothing now. It's, the industry's changing so quickly. So it was in the back of my head that, you know, I love theater. I knew I had to do it on my own, but at the time I thought, you know what, I got to keep working at the beer store. It's paying the bills and it was fun, you know, it was all. But then it hit me, you know, I can't do this for the rest of my life. And, and uh, as much as I love the people and, uh, and I was getting paid, I, I just had to move on. And, and so I decided to take the plunge and, and, and go for it. And, uh, and here we are. And here we are. Yeah. In, in a theater with rich history. Yeah. Well, d I mean, this was a movie house before, wasn't it? It was a movie house. It yeah. was It was built in the 30s. 1937. It yeah. opened in March 12th, I think, 1937. Oh, yeah. So it's been around a and long time. what was the time. first movie that they showed? You know what? I should you know, know this. You should. Come <laughs> on. This is the history of your theater. It's a Bing Crosby movie, I think. It's a Bing Crosby movie. Rhythm, range. Rhythm on the Rain. That's right. That's right. And uh, it's always... I, I know there's a lot of stories about the building, and, and, uh, but it's always been a movie house. Some people think it was a theater at one point, but as far as I know, it's always been a movie house. At one point, it was a church. I think there was a church that burnt down uh, in this area, and, and I can't remember the name of the church. So people have come up. To, it's great. People have stories about this building. People have been married here, have been confirmed here. Wow. Uh, yeah. It was, for about two years, it was a church. Uh, so that's kind of a neat piece of, of the history here. And... Uh, so yeah, it, it, and we were, you know, we were lucky to find this building, and, and I know that when were we were Were you actively in, looking? W yeah, absolutely. And we just could not find a space. We looked everywhere. We looked at warehouses. Originally, we were going to be a dinner theater, and uh, that idea phased out very quickly when I learned, I know nothing about dinner. Like, I know theater, but dinner? So I thought, Steve, what are you doing? So we, we modified it, and so I'll never forget this morning, we were, we were in, in, in downtown Kitchener, Dale and I, my wife Dale, and, uh, and we read an article about this theater closing. And one of the cool things about this whole project, and actually the whole Waterloo Stage Theater, is that people have always kind of been friends that have helped out, and, and my architect, uh, was my landlord at my apartment. So we would sit in his front porch and, and he would do pre preliminaries with me and help me out. And so I said, Peter, this is, you know, the Waterloo Theater, you know, it could be perfect. So we came down and I'll never forget, we took the tour of the theater and within like three minutes of the, of the tour, he says, we've got to get this place. We've got to move in here. It's perfect. And uh, that was just Christmas of 96, I guess. And um, and then we were really close to, to coming to terms with the landlord, and, uh, and then we had, then Christmas came, so everything was on stop. And then right after Christmas, we finalized everything, and then it was, uh, it was a go, a green light. And just two weeks after they showed the last movie here, The People vs. Larry Flynn, we you, were here. You, you opened your doors. And people said, what is going on? Because and, and, it, it happened pretty fast. And I think what people don't realize is that for about two years before that, we were doing our research and, and business plans and uh, slowly building it so that when we did move in, we could just go for it. So you knew doing? Uh, we had an idea. <laughs> I, think, I think like anything, you know, planning is one thing, but then it quickly, when reality sets in, it's a whole different, you know, ball game. And uh, I thought we did a pretty good job, you know. But getting physically, what did you have to do to get this building ready? Well, that was another big plus because it was ready. Oh, you really? know, the movie theater had 500 seats. Now we seat 250. So we had 250 seats that we removed. Uh, at the front of the building, we put in a, a rather large stage and we had to put in a backstage space, which we always laugh about with our actors because it's not a big space, but it's cozy, it's comfortable, and it's, you know, we got, all get to know each other back there. And we had to put in some kind of lounge. And again, this was kind of a, a, a different idea. Usually when you go to theater, you leave the theater and then you know, have your refreshments outside that, the theater environment. But I think Waterloo Stage is the only theater I know of outside of dinner theater where, you, where the lounge is in the theater. And it's a great idea. Our patrons love it. People love it. Uh, corporate events come here. They love it. You know, you can come in, you see the set, you can talk about it at intermission. It's like you're in this room for a couple hours and, and you, just, you just get you know, sucked into the whatever's on that night. So uh, we, had to, we had to put the lounge area in. Uh, so we popcorn machine and, and, and uh, we donated the screen to some university students, which was, you know, great for us because we had no idea how we were going to get it down. So we thought, if you guys can take it down, you can have it. So they took the screen and it, I, I think that the whole transition was about three or four weeks. It was fast and, and it was exciting. I re every day something would happen. 
and uh, and then and then we opened in, and then in you May. Get ready for your first production. Yeah. Which when did you open your first production? By May of that year, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think we opened our phone lines in February of '97 um, to 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 order subscriptions, and I'll never forget that day. It was it was February 14th, '97, and my brother was working the box office, and it was so busy. It was unbelievable. We were blown away. We were totally blown away and we thought this is great you know I think that this community which is one of the reasons we started it needed this you know I think one of the great things about what we do is with theater and company and Waterloo Stage which are kind of the resident theater companies in town here we complement each other so well and uh, there was a need for the kind of theater that we perform people think you're in this project alone but in fact you have a partner as you mentioned in yes. life yes. as in business. Tell me about Dale. Dale's great uh, I think any time you're going to do anything in, in starting a business, you've got to have support with your family first off. Um, and if you, there's a couple things you need, and one of them is the support of your family. And, and Dale has been unbelievably supportive. She, 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 she and I put our life savings into this, and she just totally believed in it. Dale teaches by day. There's a lot of times she wishes she be, could be more hands-on, but she loves teaching and, and uh, loves the kids. And, uh, and quite frankly, you know, we need her teaching to do this. Um, but I don't think she'd give it up, even if the theater wasn't here. I think she loves the classroom. But so supportive. Like, you come home after some long days, and you have to, I, sometimes I forget, I, like, I'm living this, so I have to give her the, the two-minute version of it. And for good or for bad, you know, she's got to listen to it, and, and in my excitement or, or worry or whatever. And uh, totally supportive. Totally, as with my whole family. That's Dale, yeah, she's great. But as you say, you really couldn't get into an endeavor like this without it, could you? Without that support? No. No. You need it, and and for a lot of reasons. One, to just live. Like I haven't taken a paycheck yet. There's the reason I do it is there's tons and tons of perks, and 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 I get total satisfaction of doing what I do. But I, you don't get paid, so you have to think about that. You know. So you put everything back into the business. Yeah, and I think it has to be. And, and sometimes people ask me about the financial side of business, and I often say, you know, the day I can take my first, I'll, I'll you know, talk about that more. But, uh, you know, it's just, it's, you know, you have to and keep yet, making it work. you're a success. I mean, you six seasons now, you're, what, into the seventh? Is Going that into right? your seventh season. Going into your seventh season. Yeah, and y people say, you know, you're a success, and, and um, we have succeeded in a lot of areas. Some things um, that I, I could see we could improve on, um, but I think you know the fact that we're still here is 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 telling, and and uh, I I know for a fact that we wouldn't be here without the support of so many people that have that have come through our doors over the years. Um, theater is a real, um, what, it's a team, you know. It's not about one person. And the team that we've been able to build and continues to build is, is really like a family here. This place, and I think this is why a lot of people come back here, is it's so unique in that it's, you're, you get cast in a show or you're hired to be the director of the show or build a set. You become part of our family. And the Waterloo Stage is like, a, you know, like the living room. And, uh, you know, we have barbecues with our, with our cast and, you know, it's not like we do the show and we leave. And, and I think that's what makes it kind of unique and part of the reason that we have the success we have is the people that, that have helped build it. Great game last night, or what? Did you watch the whole thing? Yeah. Must have been some pep talk in the dressing room, huh? Man, they charged out, didn't they? Oh, they sure did. For all the out-of-town games you can wear else, get Super Sports Pack on Rogers Digital Cable, because you gotta have it to get it. Want a new way to connect with those around you? And find out what's happening on local TV? Just log on to Rogers Television's new website to see when your favorite shows are on. After there, discover things like recipes, biographies, and fun contests, too. When local matters, you'll find it here at rogerstelevision.com.
just television, people matter. People in our community have amazing stories to tell. One on One brings the lives of those remarkable people into focus with candid chat about what matters to them. One on One on Rogers Television. You know something, just because the ice cream is almost finished and summer is over, doesn't mean the party cannot continue. I can catch me every Monday, Wednesday and Friday at 4.30, only on Rant, on Rogers Television. It's Rogers Television is your eye on the municipal candidates that will affect the future of the city that matters to you. The decisions that determine the infrastructure, progress, safety and economy of Kitchener are made here to represent the many. Municipal Vote 2003 includes broadcasts of your mayoral forum, where you can meet the candidates and understand what matters to Kitchener. Rogers Television, The Record, and 570 News are working together to help you make an informed choice. Was there ever a time when you thought, oh my gosh, this isn't going to work, we're not going to make it? Yeah, <laughs> a time. <laughs> I think yes. probably once every season there's been a couple times where you think, are we going to make it? You know, for one reason or, or another, something has come up. Um, probably the one that was most <laughs> recent is when we uh, was when when my son Russell was born, and uh, you know the timing was terrible for his <laughs> you know for his birth. You know, before you put on a show, you have to do your, your tech run, is when the actors in the technical world come together for the first time. And uh, he was born right in the middle of that, about three or four days before Christmas Story opened, which was a huge show, probably our biggest show, or one of the biggest that we've ever done. Huge set, uh, big technical show. <laughs> and I knew the day was coming, so I tried to get as prepared as possible, because when the phone call comes, you're gone. So the phone call came on the Friday. Russell was born on the Saturday. Our technical run, or Q to Q, was scheduled for the Sunday. The Q to Q never happened for that show. It's the first time we had never done a Q to Q. Steven Dagenstein, who's just been a, one of our set designers, who's really hands-on, hurt his back. So he was out. And the show was going so well, and it just stopped. And, and bless our director, Pat, she just kept going and finding a way to make it happen. And that's another thing about theater, you find a way to make it happen. And uh, I, so I think Monday <laughs> was when I was kind of back in the swing of things. And uh, you know, we found a way to make it happen and we had a good opening that, that, that week. And, uh, but there's always something, our furnace blew and we did a week and a half with no heat in, in uh, late November and it was very cold. And you know, we had to put inserts in the program saying, you know, we have no heat, sorry. And, uh, and that was hard. Um, but, and, and you know, like any business, there's always, once in a while, there's cash flow issues and things like that. But again, the people that have been around the project have just want to see it succeed. And I think that's a big part of why we're here. But it sounds to me like you've got a you know, load, full schedule already. And so what are you going to do in this coming season? You're going to add a couple of shows? You're going to do seven shows this year? Well, this year we're doing eight, actually. We're eight. doing our five. <laughs> Because you haven't got enough to do? Well, we're looking for something to do on this show. Actually, well, the thing we're doing this year, which is, which is different, is we're adding a family series, which is the first time we've done this. Uh, I used to work at the Center in the Square for the School for the Performing Arts. I love kids. I love kids in theater. They get so excited about the energy, uh, whether they're in the audience or on stage. We do an annual March break show. And uh, always one of the best weeks of the year. The kids are on fire. They are so excited to see... You know, I think of these actors as my friends, but these kids think of these actors as like in sync and, and you know Spice Girls. They're, they're so excited to meet these actors. It's so much fun. So we built a whole series around uh, around family programming, and our March Break show is part of that. So we're going to produce our five main stage shows, and then we're doing uh, three shows in addition to that as our family series, which kind of fills the the year for us. Tell me, what pro what production has been your favorite? And you've had six seasons. What production would you say has been your favorite? Oh, you know, it's, I guess it's like picking your favorite kid. I don't know. I, uh, I loved, I have really fond memories of, um, uh, the first show will always be special. You know, it was, that was a tough one to get up. Uh, a lot of people were there on faith. Um, and it just, it happened. So that one will always be special. Which Secret. Was? That was their playing our song, Neil Simon musical. Okay. The, the Secret Garden was, was again our first season. Um, it was 
just there's something about that production that that was memorable. The people involved were great. Um, we met Marissa, who's who's done just so well, and we're so proud of her in that one. And she was just 13. I remember we were doing an interview, and I was saying, "Yeah, with 13-year-old Marissa is doing this show." She's Steve. I'm 14. Sorry, 14. <laughs> so that one was kind of special. Um, Once Upon a Mattress was in our next season, and we met a lot of people that have been with us a long time, like Randy Johnston, who's been a fixture here. And, and very, very talented. Yeah. So, uh, you know, every year, all the shows are special, but I think in the early ones, you know, we kind of met. It was a real special yeah, show. Um, when we did the Complete Works of Shakespeare Abridged a couple years ago, that was the first time uh, a show really took off for us. We started and people didn't know what it was about. And by the end, we had, and this has never happened since, we had a lineup of people on closing night in the rain wanting to get tickets and we were sold out but we had people like 40 people waiting to get tickets for our closing night and that was great. You try unusual things here, different things. Yeah. Like you, you'll do pantomime and, yeah. and as you say, you'll, you, you know, your comedy things are great. Yeah. Do you just like taking risks or do you have an instinct about what's going to work or does it sometimes just take you by surprise? It's so funny you ask that because we were just talking about that. There's, there's no way to really tell and, I, and I'm sure that a lot of artistic directors struggle with that and, and I think that's probably the hardest thing we do is pick shows. We just closed to Elvis, Discovering Elvis. What a fun, fun show it was and I had no idea of the response it would get and it was, it was, people were screaming at these actors and they were actors, they're not Elvis impersonators, they were acting like Elvis impersonators. But they would, they were group, we had groupies, you know, and you'd never imagine that that, that would happen. So it is hard and we try to avoid getting into some kind of formula and, and try different things. You trust your instinct? Uh, yeah, I think you have to. I think you have to trust your instinct. There was a show we're doing this upcoming season. I read it. I thought it was great. I got someone to read it. They thought it was terrible. And I thought, oh, have I missed the boat on this one? So I read it again. I thought, you know what? I still think it's great. I, and, and then other people read it. And so you got to go with your instinct and, 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 and trust that. I think your audience trusts you. And, and that's there's a lot of responsibility there and, and you want to make sure that, like, like I said, we're here to entertain, that they're entertained. And you can do that in so many forums, like, like through a pantomime, which is something we're really pleased that we started, because those are a you know, people <laughs> the kids came. really get involved, they don't they? They really get involved. They yell at the characters up on stage. A lot of people had no idea what a pantomime is. They, we got the call, you know, do they speak in this? And we thought, do they speak? But like everyone thought, you know, no, two mine. and a half hours of... <laughs> No, it's, uh, it's totally interactive and you know that's a little tradition that we started and maybe every second year we'll be doing that. Um, but it is, I, that's probably the hardest thing we do is pick shows and I think part of it is, is finding the time to do it because I like to, when I read scripts, I totally envision how it would be on stage. Like well, as I'm reading, I'm thinking of people I would know who would fit these roles, how it would look on stage and, and then you just, from there you say, yeah, it'll work. And don't your priorities have to be a little different now that you have Russell? And he's how old? 19 months old? He's 19 months old. Yeah, well, you know, the day he was born during Christmas Story, uh, your life changes and anyone who has kids knows that and, and until you do, you don't understand that. Definitely it's, it's changed. He's been, he's been great to have around here. He's getting to the two-year-old point, so he needs a little bit more attention. But when he was his first year, he would be here and watch the shows and now he comes to rehearsals, he'll go up on stage and, and the actors had, have been really great to him and it's a good environment to be around actually, but uh, it, your, yeah, your priorities do change. Almost 80,000 people have come through those doors expecting to be entertained and have gone home with a smile on their face. How does that make you feel? Great. I love it. I love it. It's, uh, it's what we do, you know. It's, if our job is to make people happy and, and uh, people have busy and to be able to escape for those two hours and sometimes depending on the form of the show you know they there's different ways that they can escape whether we're doing a murder mystery and they're screaming uh, that's another I love when we did Death Trap that was our first mystery I knew when all the guy was gonna jump through the window I knew that when the guy was gonna come back to life the audience had no idea who it was to watch people grown people screaming at, at theater so it's there's nothing like it it's it's the best to see when I stand at the back here and watch people leave, how to see those smiles is great. Or when they resubscribe for the next season, they'll just put a little note, thanks for a great season. And you think, oh, that's great, you know? Uh, or when you hear about it from someone else, they say, oh, I saw your show, I loved it, I loved it. And you think, oh, good. If you weren't doing this, what would you 
be doing? What could you see yourself doing? <laughs> you know what? I have no idea. I just, I can't imagine my life without the Waterloo States. It, it, it's, it's what drives me, you know. You know, family is, is always number one. I think that family is so important and without it, you, you can't do anything. But, you know, besides that, I can't imagine not doing what we do and uh, the people we've met and, and the friends we've met and, and uh, I, I can't, I don't know what I do. Yeah. Mark Twain said, I have known a great many troubles, but most of them never happened. Will it all have been worthwhile? Absolutely. Absolutely. Every minute. There's, you know, you look back and you learn by doing and change anything? Maybe, but probably not. You know, it's, you, you've got to go through certain steps to get to where you want to go and, and, uh, and do what you want to do. And, uh, and I, don't, I don't have any regrets, no. Steve, thank you. I wish you continued success. Thanks. The son of black parents with the odds against him, Lincoln Alexander became a lawyer, a politician, and eventually the Lieutenant Governor of Ontario and the Chancellor of the University of Guelph. Join me for the next one-on-one -on -one as we explore the remarkable saga of a Canadian success story. Rogers Television Viewer Response at 894-8110 or visit our website with your comments.